Hi, my name is Randy Kay. I died and experienced heaven, but I've also interviewed thousands of others who've experienced the afterlife. Many of those have been showcased on our channel. This program will show you what you can expect after you leave this life by showing the consistencies of those that I've interviewed and how they relate to what you can expect in the next life. Here we go. Take care and God bless. In this next episode of What's Next in the Afterlife, we'll be answering the question, is there proof that there is indeed an afterlife? Well, we have interviewed thousands of people and others that I'll showcase to you in this episode have also interviewed thousands upon thousands of cases. I used to work in the healthcare industry and we would trial various therapeutics. And in those trials, we required about 500 patients to validate the efficacy of a particular therapeutic. Now, statistics have shown through various surveys that about 5% of the population has experienced some form of near-death experience. Now, that's about 400 million people. That's a much greater proof source than 500. There have been so many studies that have shown beyond the brain's activity, which, by the way, ends about one minute or less after the heart stops. And the heart stopping is the clinical definition of death. And once that happens, the brain cannot imagine the experiences that have been testified by those on our show and other studies that have been done. No, no, these are real. One of my good friends, John Burke, is the New York Times bestselling author of Imagine Heaven and also his new book, Imagine the God of Heaven. He has spent over 35 years researching near-death experiences, and he wasn't a believer at the inception of his research, but he certainly is now. Here's a vignette of my interview with John about his studies of the afterlife. I think the reason, well, I know, I think what the Lord was saying is um, I am doing something for this time. And I think what he's doing is he is he's bringing these testimonies of people who clinically die and come back, um, you know, which is a like I like to say, that's a high bar. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Some people say, I wish I had that experience. And I say, well, there's a caveat there, you know. <laughs> well, and, you know, we were just talking about some of the things you still have to struggle through from mm. dying. Right. right. And coming right. back. Yes. And I, I like to say, yeah, show me, you know, there, most of the people I interview have a tracheotomy scar. Uh-huh. Right. So it's a high bar. It's yes. E- like you guys often say, it's easy to die. It's hard coming back. It is. It is. There's a lamentation, I think, that that occurs. But I do think what God is doing is he's raising up these stories all over the world, testimonies of people. And that's why I wrote Imagine the God of Heaven, that there are people all over the world from every continent. I've got people from every continent who, when they die, they encounter the same God. And it's not necessarily the God they would have expected culturally or even religiously. And yet this is the God of light and love, not a force. This is a very personal person, Mm -hmm. knows them intimately, Mm -hmm. gives them a life review. Some of them, though they weren't expecting Jesus, know or find out he's the, he's the God Jesus revealed. And this is happening everywhere. I have people from, Tehran, 
who told me their story in Farsi and it was translated uh, from India, from Australia, Hong Kong, uh, China, mm. atheist, communist Chinese, and yet they're seeing the same and experiencing the same God. So I believe this is God's apologetic for our new age. John Burke's research has confirmed that indeed the Christian faith supports near-death experiences. And those who have had a genuine encounter with Jesus Christ are indeed believers in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So not all experiences reflect those who are Christians. Many account for their afterlife in terms of more ethereal definitions, such as a light, a presence that is non-defined as God or Jesus Christ. So there is a variety of experiences. But what's interesting from the thousands that we have collectively interviewed is that those who have actually met Jesus have been believers in Jesus as their Lord and Savior prior to their death. Now, Dr. Jeffrey Long is the founder of the Near Death Experience Research Foundation. He also is one of the largest researchers of thousands of these cases. Here's our interview with Dr. Long about near death experiences and their validity based on years of research. You know, Randy, that's actually over 3,500 that have been posted. Virtually everybody allows their experience to be posted anonymously on the website. So it's uh, well under 5% that disallow that. So we, we, through integrity, don't post it. So it's really, you know, somewhat over 3,500 year death experiences that have been shared. That's the glorious thing about the research that I do when you have it on the website. Anybody on the world can visit the website and read the full context of the near-death experience. You don't have to take my word for this research that I do. It's right there, plain view. It's the most transparent type of way to do research possible. And may I add, uh, while we're on the topic, portions of the website, including many examples of near-death experiences, have been uh, the website's translated into over 30 different languages. So it's literally a global outreach. People all over the world have the ability to find in their native language near-death experiences, complete the survey. Uh, so it's a, it truly become a global outreach. We, we actually have well over 50,000 unique visitors every month, and, and many of those visitors are from, from all around the world. Now, in the cases of John Burke, and yours truly in our research, we found that the God experienced by those who confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior was indeed not just a light or a feeling, but a person. But there are other experiences that have been validated by people like Dr. Jeffrey Long. But the experiences are validated through clinical documentation, as well as validations and vetting that we do for our interviews and some of the others that are part of researching near-death experiences. Now, whether one has an experience as a believer in Jesus Christ or as a believer in some other form of belief or religion, those universally almost, who go on to have an afterlife experience have this sense that they really don't want to return, that there's more to this life than a life on earth. And in fact, that's the synopsis from virtually all experiences that have been researched. From the compounding evidence, both scientifically and anecdotally, that is that we have discovered that indeed near-death experiences are real. The compounding evidence is overwhelming, greater than in many scientific studies that have been done in the past related to other things like clinical studies, like the validation of historical studies and things of that sort. 
But there's one synopsis of how one can actually get to meet Jesus in heaven in the afterlife. And that comes from the Bible. In John chapter 316, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That's the hope that's been validated by thousands of experiences from those who either knew Jesus going into the afterlife or discovered him in that experience and came back to testify of it. Take care and God bless.